Hello, my friends. It's time for Thought Shifting Thursdays. Yay. Uh, and I'm in joy today because that's what we're talking about is joy. Living from an inner experience of freedom and joy, which sounds kind of like obvious. Of course, why wouldn't we all want to do that? Um, well, here's why. <laughs> because as human beings, we tend to be using the world of form, the outside world, what's happening in the physical world to inform our inner experience. So what I'm inviting you to do today is to turn that around, to just flip it on on its edge and use the inner experience to inform the world of form. Look, it's so seductive, right? I'll be happy when I get a better job. I'll be happy when I have more money. I'll be happy when I find my soulmate. I'll be happy when my health is better. Um, the problem is, in all of those cases, I'm putting my happiness, and even more importantly, joy, out in the future. And guess what? There is no future, right? In the absolute sense, there's only this moment, right? So as long as it's out there, it may never show up. Um, <clears throat> let me define joy for you, how I like to define it for the purpose of uh, the class we're teaching based on the book, Busting Loose in the Money Game, and for the purpose of my life. Joy to me is not the opposite is not the opposite of sadness that's happiness that's a personal experience right for me joy is a transpersonal quality a pervasive spiritual quality that can be present even in moments of grief of loss of pain of sadness um, because it's it can be present all the time and it's synonymous for me with some, you know, some people like other words, right? But it's synonymous with me for, it's synonymous for me with deep inner peace, connectivity, deep connection. This is the kind of joy that I'm talking about. And it's always long term, right? If it's a spiritual quality, it can't be instant gratification or it can't be just happiness. It's, it's long term. And so we're going to talk about living from an experience of joy and doing what brings us joy to nurture that inner experience. Um, so it's long term. Let me say more about that. So one way to determine, as it says in the description, you know, to use joy as the compass for making decisions in our life, for even making decisions about what I'm going to do today, right? Or which path to take or which job to take or which person to um, embark on a relationship with, right? Um, because when we, when we uh, do what brings us joy, and that becomes our compass, then that is the most powerful demonstration we can offer ourselves that, A, we love ourselves, right? Because it's one thing to say, I love myself, but if I'm going around doing things that don't bring me joy most of the time, then um, I'm not going to really get that at a deep level, right? I'm not showing myself that I love myself. I'm only saying it. Um, I could do an inner child exercise, which I do with people all the time, and 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 have people look to help people to love their inner child, right? Can't love ourselves more than we love every part of ourselves. Um, but again, if I'm if I'm uh, doing things that don't bring me joy, what I am showing my my psyche, my subconscious, what I'm really telling myself is that I don't deserve to experience pure joy. I don't deserve to live a joyful life if I'm doing a bunch of things that I don't like doing. Okay, so what may sound impractical, in this video I'm going to make as practical as possible. And I believe by the end of it, you'll be convinced as well. Um, hi Caroline. Hi Naomi. Hi uh, JB. Thanks for joining us. Um, by the end of the video, I'm convinced that you will see this as practical. The most practical thing you can do for your life is to do what brings you joy on a daily basis. Okay, so um, I don't know if I want to go into that whole story. I'm going to try to give you the short version of how I started applying this. Now, in the book, Busting Loose from the Money Game, which we're studying, and two, at least two of the people here um, are in the class uh, with us. So this is the book cover. It's a lousy cover. Nobody really likes the cover. <laughs> well, somebody likes it. Obviously, Robert Scheinfeld, the author, liked it. Um, but 
Busting Loose from the Money Game. The subtitle is Mind-Blowing Strategies for Changing the Rules About a Game You Can't Win. So I was just thinking about this this morning. It's kind of ironic that, you know, people, if I'm teaching this class and people might come to it because they think they want to get more money, but the truth is it's not about getting more money. It's about living from an expanded state of awareness, right? My favorite quote in the book is, when you get to the place in consciousness where you, where you realize it's no better to have a million dollars than it is to owe a million dollars, then you'll have the consciousness that will allow you to create whatever you want with a snap of your fingers. So I've talked about this in previous videos. The last, I don't know, four videos I think have been done on the class. That makes sense because we're into our fourth week. The reason I'm doing my Thought Shifting Thursdays on this topic is because I'm teaching it, I'm living it more fully than ever. So it's on my mind and in my heart. So I want to share it with you. I want you to get the kind of benefit that I'm getting from it. And the people in the class are as well. Okay, so <clears throat> so the, the short version of this story is um, Scheinfeld in the book talks about living in reactive mode. I changed that phrase to living in responsive mode. I like that word a little bit better. And so what it means is you wake up in the morning, as it says in the description today, and you ask, what will bring me the most joy to do today? And then you go do that. Um, so again, that might sound really impractical, right? Um, and when I, you know, I'd read the book and I'd apply, applied all the practices except for that one. That's the one I held off on for a couple of years. I mean, it just seemed too impractical for me. I mean, after all, I've got a business to run. How can I wake up in the morning and just decide what will bring me joy? Now, remember in my definition, it's long-term joy, right? So it's not, you know, I'll wake up in the morning and it'll bring me, you know, the most joy to, let's see, what would be something frivolous? Um, watch, um, you know, binge watch Netflix shows all day long. Now, if that was going to truly bring me long-term joy, then I would do it. But it's probably not going to, right? What will bring me more long-term joy will be talking to my clients, right? Um, but sometimes it might be, gosh, I just want to shut everything down and go to the beach today. Um, I've done that a few times. But here's the story then. So I had, you know, put this one off for the longest time. And so I said, look, everything I've applied from this book has been pretty amazing for my life. So I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go out on a limb and every morning wake up, say, what will bring me joy? The, the um, phrasing in the book is, see what pops into your hologram. Hologram is what we experience in this life, in the illusion, right, <clears throat> of um, physical life. And then how do you want to react to it, or in my word, respond to it? So um, I started doing that. Wake up in the morning. What will bring me the most joy? <clears throat> Look at my schedule. I've got four clients today. Will it bring me joy to talk to each one of this, these people? There was never a no on clients. I love talking to my clients. I could actually be um, not feeling well physically or emotionally. And I want to talk to my clients because it's healing for me. It lifts my spirit. But um, other things that might be on my agenda, oh, I was planning on, you know, creating some promotional materials, posting on, uh, on social media. Um, I, I, never, I don't miss uh, Thought Shifting Thursdays very often, though. Um, might be calling some uh, organizations to have me come speak. Pretty much I don't do any, any of, I don't do that anymore because people call me to speak nowadays. That's all a matter of consciousness. Um, yeah, gosh, I haven't reached out to someone to invite me in, in years now. So, um, but what I used to do, um, how I built up my, my clientele, my, uh, my coaching clientele is, <laughs> it's interesting, I've got this life coaching network. I post this there, so you guys might be seeing some, some of you might be seeing this. Um, and uh, it's interesting to me how many people are promoting through social media and the strategies. There's so many strategies about how to get people. And, and you know, like there's hundreds, well, we've got 
3.2 thousand people in our group now. We've just been doing this for a few months. So it's something that's very popular. But people have all these intricate strategies for how to get people to give them their, their contact information so that they can you know, offer their services. And, um, and I see people going through this and, and charging very little for their coaching. They're probably new coaches. And, um, and also um, just working really hard to get clients. And the philosophy that I'm sharing with you right now, the practice, um, I used to, this is what I'm going to get to in a moment, I used to, <clears throat> you know, spend a lot of time getting clients. <clears throat> now I, I don't put any effort into it. They come to me easily and effortlessly. So um, what I used to do is I travel around, I do speaking events. And that's the point I was going to make about what I offer to people what works for me best and I think rather than spending all your time on social media get yourself in front of people whether you're doing um, and that could be virtually right especially after COVID everyone's doing everything everything by Zoom now so do do a, a workshop um, on Zoom right or connect with an organization or promote your own events and get yourself in front of people because when you're in front of people and people are connecting with you heart to heart. You're, they're hearing your voice, they're seeing your face, your body language, you're sharing in an enthusiastic way um, what your message is, what you're doing, then people can connect to you so much better than if they're reading something that you've written on social media, right? Um, and so then um, inviting people into your practice or what you have to offer becomes so much easier than chasing people down on social media. Um, so you offer a complimentary session. They want to do it because they've already experienced you. And now, you know, I get an 80% um, conversion rate when I do a complimentary session with people. 80% of those people um, do sessions, uh, sign up for more coaching. Okay, so I would go around, I would speak and um, and from the stage, speaking at an organization, I would mention my sign-up sheet. If you sign up on the sheet, check the box, you'll get an invitation to do a complimentary session with me. Um, and then I do, the, I do a workshop, usually after the lecture, and pass that uh, sign-up sheet around on a clipboard, and people would, virtually everyone would, would uh, sign it and check the box. And at the time, it was kind of, curious to me that I would shortly after that send out an email reminding people about the complimentary session and um, I was surprised that at, at the beginning that I'd get very few people would respond and I didn't assume that they didn't want to do it I just assumed that people are busy and they get a lot of email so then I would call people up leave them a, a, a message reminding them about the comp session um, again get very little response so I'd continue to call four, five, maybe even six times. Wouldn't keep leaving messages, didn't want to bug people. Um, but I would, um, and, and, and then eventually people would, most people would finally pick up the phone. Maybe it was because, oh wow, I've seen this phone number five times now. I gotta get this guy off my back, right? Or just find out what the heck he has, or what, what, what he wants to, to uh, talk me into, right? Of course, I don't talk anyone into anything. And once they would pick up the phone, um, they would say, oh gosh, yes, I, I remember you now. You did that workshop, that amazing talk. I absolutely want to do it. Um, I didn't respond just because I've been easy. So that's confirmation. So um, so that was working, right? I, I, was, I had built up a, a solid clientele by doing that. And yet, as I ex describe it to you, there's a lot of busyness involved in that calling people, you know, five, six times, right? Um, if, I had a, if I had 50 people on, on my list, that's a lot of people to call five times. So I'd reached a plateau because I was spending so much time doing that, I couldn't, I wouldn't have time to contact more organizations to have, to have them, you know, have me come speak. Um, so I decided, living in responsive mode, you know what, that's not bringing me joy anymore, all that busy work. So I was still going around speaking, and I st still do that now. It's been more by Zoom lately. Um, I'm going to get back on the road pretty soon. Looking forward to that. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, and so once I was living in responsive mode then and, and simply doing what brings me joy, I would still speak and I, would, I, I stopped mentioning from the stage, sign up for my, my, my list. I only wanted the people to sign up who would find it, who wanted it so much that I didn't have to even invite them, right? They'd come up to my table where I'm selling my books and they'd see the list and they'd sign up. Or, you know, I'd still pass it around at the workshop because those are people I, I know are going to be engaged because we're doing a transformational experience together. Um, so I'd st still send out the email because that was easy enough to do, but I stopped making the calls because it wasn't bringing me joy. So I was doing far fewer during the four minute, four month period that I was practicing this, doing far fewer um, complimentary coaching sessions. And so practically speaking, I would have thought that I would have fewer clients because I had natural attrition at the end of those four months. But in fact, I had more clients. I was working about 60% less. Now, I don't even call it work now. It's only play that I do. Somebody uh, posted on uh, a question on Facebook, if you didn't work, if you didn't have to work, um, what would you do with your life? What would you do day to day? And my answer was, I don't have to work, <laughs> and I don't. People pay me to play all day long. So that's what my life is, is like as a result of doing this practice. So um, let me add one more thing to this. Um, so I had more clients at the end of this these four months. And the other things that I was doing, now that I was not doing you know, some days wouldn't do promotion, wouldn't do other things that are part of my business, is I might go for an extended walk in the park. I might sit out here by the labyrinth. I might um, take a, a long nap in the afternoon. Whatever will bring me joy in the moment. And um, so I was working 60% less and getting a better result. What the book says is that our our success has nothing to do. I might, I, I, I agree with that. Some people might argue with that. So I'll say very little to do with what we do and everything to do with how we feel inside. Can I just feel joy right now? Can I feel fulfillment? Can I feel abundance? That's the secret. And again, the way to nurture that is to live a joyful life, to choose what brings me joy. <clears throat> um, so, a really interesting thing happened at the end of those four months. All of a sudden, I started missing some of the things I was doing before that I was doing because I thought I should do them or I have to do them in order to maintain my business success. And I started doing, and, and so I started doing them again. I started making those calls again, but not because I thought I had to, Oh, it's been seven days. I better make those calls before these people forget about me. You, you hear the limitation in that, right? Um, I started calling only when it will bring me joy to talk to those people. And um, I tell you what, when we do things for the joy of doing them, the result is always exponentially better. Got a little pause there for a minute on Instagram. Um, look at the, the, the light streaming through the trees there. Can you see that in the video? Um, and so it's infinitely more effective to do what brings us the joy, to, to, what, to do things for the joy rather than the have to or the should. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> so that's when my business exploded. Um, and that's when it started and it's continued to expand where I never have to do anything to get clients. I just show up in my life with joy and people want to be around that, you know? <clears throat> um, Stuart Wow, one of my teachers for a brief time back in the early 90s said, um, this was about prosperity consciousness, he said that the more personal power you have, and I would equate that to um, simply living from joy and love, the more personal power you have, the more people will want to be around you. And he said, and when they show up, Bill them. I don't do any billing. Everyone pays me in advance because I don't want. It doesn't bring me joy to spend time doing that either. So um, let's see. So here's the scenario offered to people in my workshops. Just checking the time here. Um, so um, 
You wake up in the morning. Let's say you work a nine to five job. You wake up in the morning and say, what will bring me joy to do today? What will bring me the most joy? Well, it's on my schedule to go to work today. Or well, it's on my schedule if I have my own business to do these, have these appointments today. Um, and so let's say that you decide, you know what? I've been working really hard lately. I think I'm, it'll bring me the most joy to go to the beach today. That's what I would do. So you go to the beach, have a great time. You come home, you feel really energized and refreshed and, and great. And you wake up the next morning and say, what will bring me the most joy to do today? And by the way, you call it, uh, well, let's say the second, the same thing, right? You say, you know, it's really fun at the beach today. I'm scheduled to go into work or I've got these, po these uh, appointments that I postponed. But you know, I think I really deserve to go to the beach again. That'll bring me the most long-term joy. And so you call into work, you say what you have to say, um, and mental health day or whatever, you go to the beach again. Let's say you do this for several days. At some point, you're going to find that, you know, the beach has been, you wake up in the morning, the beach has been really fun, but it's getting a little bit boring, you know, same old, same old beach, same old water. Um, it's beautiful and everything, but you know, I'm kind of missing uh, the people at work and the projects I was working on. You know what? I think it'll bring me the most joy today to go to work or play as I call it. So you go to work and guarantee when you show up doing it for the joy of it rather than because I have to, otherwise they're not going to pay me. Um, you're going to be more productive. Um, you're going to create better relationships. You're going to have more fun and you're probably going to get a promotion. <laughs> um, <clears throat> here's the thing. The people in life who show up with the most joy are the people who have the most success in any endeavor, right? If you're in sales and anyone who works for themselves is in sales of some kind, um, whoever shows up with the most joy makes the most sales because people want to buy things when they are feeling joyful. And if you're joyful, if you're exuding joy, they're going to feel joyful around you. They're going to be, yeah, why not? They're going to feel more free, more expansive. Let's buy it, right? If you work for someone else, if there's two people up for a promotion um, and they have, you know, at least close to equal skill level, the person who shows up with the most joy, they're going to get the promotion. Why? Because the person who is the decision maker in deciding on that promotion, um, they're going to be working with that person and they want to be around the person who makes them feel most joyful. Simple as that. Um, as human beings, we tend to do what brings us the most joy, but we often forget about the joy for which we're doing it. So even if the scenario, even if you hate your job, um, you might at the end of those four or five days at the beach say, you know, it's been great at the beach, but I really do like getting those paychecks and I don't think they're going to be given to me anymore if I don't go into work pretty soon. So then you tune in to the joy that you get from receiving the paychecks, right? And, um, and all the things that it allows you, that the joys that it allows you to do in your life from getting those paychecks. And again, by using joy as your compass and proving to your own psyche and subconscious that you deserve to live a life of joy, at some point, if you don't, if you hate your job, you're going to realize what the heck am I doing in a job that doesn't bring me joy? Because you've taught yourself that you deserve to live in joy. And so, you are going to become engaged and committed to finding a better job, right? So that's another example of how doing what brings us joy consistently, using joy as the compass, um, brings us, just compels us to live a more joyful life. All right, the dog's barking. That means the, um, checking the time, means the gardeners are going to be here any minute. <laughs> been coming early lately. So I'll sign out in a moment. So um, anything else I want to say? Just this, that you deserve to live a life of joy. Uh, I'll emphasize one more time that the more we live from an inner experience of freedom and joy right here and right now and love any spiritual quality, the more life just aligns up with that. It might not happen instantly. That's okay because it's an inside out game. 
continue to nurture and support your inner feelings of love, abundance, freedom, joy. You know, as I've said in many previous uh, uh, videos, can you feel joy right now? Close your eyes. Think of a joyful moment. Now you're in joy. Now you're a joyful person. Can you do it again in this moment? And now in this next moment, in this next moment, all of a sudden, you're living in joy consistently. Keep practicing. Wherever you are in this journey of expanding joy is the perfect place to be. It's never about the destination. It's about the journey. So play with it. Have fun with it. Embrace, appreciate yourself for right where you are. Love yourself unconditionally. That's the most important thing right there. So, um, if you got some value out of this video, give us a like, give us a comment. Um, t tell us, this is the assignment in the class this week. What joyful thing, what's, what joyful activities can you do this week that will prove to yourself that you deserve a life of joy? So, go ahead and uh, make a comment on that. And, um, you know, share it with those who you think could benefit from this. And uh, that's it for today. We'll see you next week. Love you guys. Have a fantastic rest of your week and a phenomenal, joyful weekend. All right. Love you.